So in this video, we're going to talk a bit more about the goods market, and uh, I want to do th three things. First, uh, we're going to uh, show that the goods market equilibrium, where demand is equal to production and income, can equivalently be expressed as the quality of investment and savings. And based on that insight, we're going to derive a new graph and in that new graph show the paradox of savings. So let me go to a new page and do the first thing here, namely show you that uh, the goods market equilibrium can be shown to imply that aggregate investment is equal to aggregate savings. So let's uh, do a simple, little bit of simple algebra. First, uh, suppose that the economy is closed and we do not either have a government so that total production or income simply decomposes into consumption and investment. So demand by households and demand by firms. So there's assumed to be no demand by uh, the government and no demand by uh, the foreign sector. Now, uh, what in turn is savings? Savings then is simply by counting the remainder of what households have after they uh, made the expenditures for consumption. And we get, of course, as well that y is equal uh, y minus c is equal to i. So let me write that just below here which we get from the goods market uh, identity y doing this all wrong y minus c and from these two equations, we can clearly see that uh, when this equation is satisfied, S must as well, as well be equal to, to I. So at the goods market equilibrium, uh, savings is equal to investment. Goods market equilibrium is attained when this equation holds and that equation implies that savings is equal to investment. So uh, how can we show that in a new graph, our point number two? Well, for that, let's first recall that we know what the savings function looks like. I savings is income less consumption, and we know what the consumption function looks like. So S is equal to the negative of autonomous consumption plus 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume times Y. So there are no taxes here since we've assumed that there's no government. So uh, equivalently, we could say that this is S0 plus S1Y or uh, autonomous savings S0 plus MP is the marginal propensity to save times y. These are all equivalent ways, ways to express that. Let's put it in a graph. So we have, uh, what we want to put in the graph is this relationship, s equal to i. Question then is, what do we put on our two axes. Now, let's have savings and investment on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis we'll have income. Now, so investment is in our first approximation model here exogenous. I is equal to I bar, which means that investment is uh, just a straight line namely independent of income. 
is an exogenous amount I bar that does not depend on income so whatever the level of income investment will be I bar how do I draw the savings function the savings function is S0 or the negative of the autonomous amount of consumption which has to be a negative intercept here I'm going to label it minus C0 and has a slope of the marginal propensity to save which is 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume so it has a positive slope that lies between 0 and 1 slope between 0 and 1 so what do we get here well we do get an intersection uh, which maps out a Y star so at this level of income uh, investment is equal to savings at this intersection we have a macroeconomic equili equilibrium that means that in that equilibrium investment is equal to I bar and savings then is as well equal to that same amount I bar good so from this very simple accounting here on the left hand side showing that where Z is equal to Y we can show as well that S is equal to I and we can derive this graph we can express that in this graph on the right hand side now I want to go to a new page and uh, read draw quickly that diagram I need of course a decently drawn diagram so let's try to do that I bar and S so uh, now we're getting to our third point namely the paradox of saving what happens now in this diagram what happens if the savings function shifts upward first of all what would that imply well, the savings function shifting upward means that we get this kind of sh this kind of move which means that from the initial minus C0 we're moving upwards to a different level of minus C0 let's call this prime and double prime or C01 and C02 so these are different levels which means that the level of consumption has fallen or uh, the level of savings has risen so in that sense uh, that individuals are trying to save more we get here our initial Y star I should label as well the axes let me do that I S and Y so we have our initial Y star here but then you see that uh, our S2 uh, maps out a new equilibrium Y star 2 which lies to the left now is there uh, a problem with that uh, the question arises and that is why we call this the paradox of saving why uh, that uh, what happens to the level of income when individuals are saving more now uh, an often and intuitive uh, answer to that question is that uh, the level of income will rise since uh, savings translate presumably into investment and wealth but if we're all doing that at the same time uh, consumption will fall and through the multiplier process the level of income in fact falls and since that is on the face of it
counterintuitive. We call it the paradox of saving. Higher levels of saving lead to lower income due to the fall in consumption, uh, which is multiplied into uh, the lower level of lower level of output. You see, uh, furthermore, that in fact the level of savings has not changed between the two situations uh, in the equilibrium one and the equilibrium two. The key then to understand what determines income in this kind of model is to look at uh, the level of autonomous demand, namely uh, investment here. You see that I'm going to add it here on the right hand side. If investment is increased, an increase in investment, I1 and I2, we get a higher level of, of income. So a shi an upward shift in investment generates the savings necessary to finance it. An upward shift here back on the on the left in our main picture, an upward shift in savings does not generate investment. An upward shift in savings and a desired increase in savings uh, leads to first of all a decrease in consumption which decreases income at the same and unchanged level of aggregate macroeconomic savings. Now let me just add a one further short point. Uh, what happens if instead of changing C0 the marginal propensity to consume changes. So the marginal propensity to consume falls. Uh, out of every additional dollar of income uh, households want to save more. So let's say that the marginal propensity to consume falls from 0.8 to 0.6. We can quickly map that out here. We have our I bar and we have a initial savings function and then uh, if you think about it for a moment you see that if C0 doesn't change our intercept is the same but the slope changes and the savings function then becomes steeper here with S2 since the marginal propensity to save has increased and we have a new equilibrium again that has shifted towards the left so again if our behavior changes with the higher propensity to save uh, paradoxically, we see a decrease in income at an unchanged level of savings and investment. Lastly, how would that look in the graph that we have studied before and that you're maybe most familiar with? The same, the same process. We have Z and Y, uh, the production line with a slope of 1 and our aggregate demand function Z uh, with autonomous expenditures A here and the slope of C1 for the aggregate demand function. We have, as you can see, uh, we have our initial equilibrium here, Y star 1 and the question now is how would a decrease in the autonomous consumption affect this equilibrium to be the equivalent of this graph over here it is not all too complicated it's just here in this uh, in this case we have a downward shift so from Z1 we shift down to Z2 or Z double prime and we have from an initial C0 1 we go to C0 double prime obviously with all the other 
uh, components of autonomous demand. But you see that, uh, as in the other chart, which describes entirely the same process, we get a leftward ch change in income, a decrease in income. Uh, and in this graph, then very clearly, uh, you see uh, how that change comes about, namely due to the multiplier process in the well-known uh, stepwise fashion.